Hello everyone, welcome back to PTED Chemistry channel. So my name is Mr. On and in this tutorial video I'll go through uh, this is a uh, October November 2019 paper 3 2. This is an actual practical paper but what concerns a lot of people really is the, is the experimental skill that I'm going to show you today. Today is actually a calorimetric experiment so we're going to measure temperature um, uh, change actually we're going to calculate temperature change from the final temperature as well as initial temperature um, of the reaction itself and we're going to do an interview of calorimetry and today's calorimetry is about acid and base titration so any acid and base reaction is bound to be exothermic because of the ionic equation that uh, that you are well, then you can create on your own H plus plus OH minus coming together oppositely charged ions attracting and therefore forming water without breaking any bonds any neutralization reaction will have the same ionic equations and therefore it will be exothermic uh, by right okay so we're expecting a temperature increase and this is just uh, I'll probably have a picture in picture where I can show you the question later on as well uh, but I have a piece of paper where I'm gonna record my data because I do not want any liquid to spill on electronic devices and this is what you should practice on as well you should really practice writing on paper and taking good care of your paper because you only get one copy of the question paper and it's not fair if everyone has to ask for a second copy of the question paper in the real exam. Alright, so as I mentioned, um, this is PTED Chemistry Channel So, and there will be a lot more experimental videos coming in the future uh, even though I'm teaching all levels, uh, 5070 at the moment, this is equivalent to the IGCSE Extended Chemistry curriculum uh, or any 14 to 16 years old uh, chemistry curriculum all around the world. So my channel has full paper tutorials, but it also has topical playlists, which are more applicable to, to anyone coming from other curriculum, but it still caters for the same age range, where the all-level and IGCSE staff caters for the 14 to 16 years old, and the majority of the 16 to 18 years old who are doing A-levels or IB curriculum, you are looking really at the, at the A-level uh, topical playlist uh, all around my channel. Okay, so. When I say experimental video, it involves me doing actual experiments so you don't really see on the screen the usual um, paper walkthrough, the step-by-step -step tutorials, whereas this is more about the experimental skills and I will highlight a couple of things as I do the actual experiments. It's all about uh, observations, data collection, data analysis including tabulation of data, how you analyze the data and uh, eventually the data data analysis is data processing and eventually what kind of evaluation can you get it, which is to do with accuracy, percentage error, suggestion to improve the experiments, so on and so forth. Okay, So a lot of these relate back to, um, if you are an A-level student, a lot of these relate to to your actual paper tree as well as part of your paper 5 which is experimental planning or design as well as analysis and evaluation because that paper even though it's an A-level paper it doesn't exactly assess your knowledge it assesses you on, on your practical skills your experimental skills and chemistry being an experimental subject it's really down to experiments every theory that you learn in chemistry comes down from experiments okay so uh, before I start a bit of self promotion so if you're watching this video presumably you already know what my channel does so don't forget to click the button on the bottom right subscribe to the channel and please do share the channel with as many people as possible whom you know can benefit from what I do on my channel uh, not just the practical experimental kind of video but also the paper walkthrough as well as all those topical MCQ playlists and topical um, um, theory playlists because when I cover paper, I, I actually try to go in depth into the conceptual understanding because in a way, it's a good recap uh, to cover the entire syllabus and uh, since I'm not really teaching you in school, so it's really down to you to do the extra work and cover the syllabus on your own and all you're doing when you go through topical playlists is really you are ensuring that you are seeing as many questions as possible that could be asked around a certain topic whereas when you 
you just do a full paper tutorial, so you are limited by what is being asked by that paper alone. Okay, so don't forget to check those out, browse around the channel, see what you like, and share the channel widely with everyone you know, uh, ranging from all level IGCSE students all the way to A level and IB students. Okay, so I hope the channel has been useful to you, and do follow me at ptet.chemistry, ptet.chemistry on Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter. If you use these social media platforms, or whenever you return to these social media platforms, you know when exams are over. Let's get started with chemistry. So calorimetry. So this is a reaction between NaOH and H2SO4. So I just show you very quickly because uh, I'm not very good at video editing, so I can't really be. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do the picture in picture on my uh, video editing software, but um, really you don't want to be spending too much time on those things. As you know, I'm not a professional uh, video editor, and um, neither do I claim to be such. So we are good at whatever we do, and I'm good at doing what I do. Okay. Anyway, so this is a burette, in case you've never seen a burette, it's got a tab at the bottom. So this burette is reasonably clean, I just used it the other day and I have washed it with distilled water before. It's got some mark on the outside, but there's just superficial mark on the outside, cosmetic mark on the outside. Uh, what I'll do is, I have, I do not wash my burette with distilled water anymore because I do actually need to fill it in. I need to rinse the burette before any use. I need to rinse the burette with the solution that I'm going to fill it in and making sure that I pass some volume down at the bottom. So I need to actually allow the liquid to pass in the bottom and close the tap so that these things are filled with the liquid in the burette as well. But before I fill them, I have to rinse the burette with the solution that I'm going to use. It's a 50.00 CNQ burette. This is a 25ml pipette. So the pipette looks a bit dirty on the outside, so I'll just have to wash it later on. In terms of pipette, by right, you can actually wash it with water and it will not affect your titration because the actual amount when you withdraw 25ml uh, from, the, from the bottle, uh, when you withdraw 25 ml of solution, 25.0 CNQ of solution, your mole is going to be same even though the concentration might change if you have a little bit of water in here. This is all covered in my other experimental tutorial on, um, um, on what was it again? Uh, I think it was the redox titration MnO4 minus with uh, acidified MnO4 minus with iron 2. Uh, instead, what we do is we try to suck in a little bit of the solution that we're going to fill in, we can rinse with that. But uh, essentially, if you got a little bit of water in here, if you wash it with distilled or deionized water, it shouldn't matter. But what are we doing here? We are not doing titration, so the, the mall is not of concern here. This is to do with calorimetry. Okay. So, mm, anyway, let's just be safe. I think it shouldn't matter if you wash this with water here, because the mall of the the mole of whatever you put in is still the same, so it's still going to react with whatever amount of the other stuff that you have in here. This is not a usual titration with an indicator. This is what you call calorimetric titration between an acid and a base. The acid here is a sulfuric acid. So they told us that P, oh sorry, they told us that P is sodium hydroxide and Q is a sulfuric acid. So we're just using leftover from from uh, some students in the school that I am in at the moment. So these leftover chemicals, they don't keep for so long, obviously, uh, because when students do new practicals, then the old chemicals are sometimes disposed uh, to make space, and these are just the leftover from those chemicals. Just be aware that chemicals are actually expensive, it costs money. Wherever you are from, if you have the opportunity to actually go into the lab and to experiment, I advise you, I suggest that you take it seriously and not take it for granted, okay? Because you might not get the same opportunity to go into the lab and, and have such experience again. And such experience is really, really beneficial. Uh, for someone who has never really been in the lab doing a lot of these things, you wouldn't really be able to appreciate chemistry to the fullest extent. You wouldn't really be able to explain uh, a paper file which is experimental planning and design and this is evaluation very well, simply because you don't have that experience in the lab of making mistakes. Making mistakes is actually how we learn most of the time. You might not have seen me making a lot of mistakes, but then I learned by making a lot of mistakes when I was a student as well. And that is essentially how people learn. You learn by making mistakes and reflecting on it and making sure that, you know, improve on it next time and not to do the same mistake again. 
Alright, so let's get started. I talk a lot. So, first step of the experiment, I'm going to pipette 25 and 0 CPOP. So, you don't really see me doing it on paper, you always see me doing it on the screen. So, you will start by circling, underlining, whatever you do on the question paper. The examiner will just mark your data, they will not care what you do on the question. So do not think that you will understand things, do not think that you know it makes you seem less clever if you have to make a mark on the question paper because different people have different abilities. I am very slow, so you know I tend to forget things, so I tend to write all over my paper. Okay? So P is sodium hydroxide in a plastic cup. So I have a, not a plastic cup, but this is what you call styrofoam or what you call polystyrene cup. So styrofoam or polystyrene cup is going to be very uh, light, very light. Okay. So what we do is we support it on a picker like this. All right. And this is a way in calorimetry of us to reduce heat loss because this is a polystyrene cup. Uh, it's actually a poor conductor of heat because it is a poor conductor of heat it doesn't allow your it doesn't allow oops let me move this up a little bit so it doesn't allow it doesn't allow the heat to escape from the experiment therefore your your heat loss is minimized of course you see there's a little bit of gap inside the glass beaker so some suggestion would have been to cover the bottom bit with cotton wool and cotton wool is an insulation between the styrofoam cup inside and the, and the beaker outside. So a bit of cotton wool inside will provide further insulation. It will provide, uh, uh, you try and increase the accuracy of your, of your calorimetry experiment because it will prevent further heat loss, essentially. The other suggestion, of course, is my plastic cup does not come with a lid. I could put a plastic lid on top but the plastic lid, you know, like when you put the straw in, that's where you put the thermometer through and you can still measure temperature uh, of the solution mixture while keeping the energy loss or the heat loss because you have a plastic lid that is insulated. Okay, so a bit of suggestion to that experiment. These are the kind of things that usually appear um, in alternative to practical, for example, uh, which of course is an all level kind of paper, uh, or it could be in a real practical paper like this. I think there's a question on uh, suggest how to improve the experiment. It could also be in a paper 5 in A level, experimental planning design in terms of suggestion, as well as practical paper in A level as well. Okay? So practical is pretty much the same whether you're doing all level or A level or IGCSE, it's still the skill that matter. Alright? So talk about the pet, talk about burette. So Q is standard sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid into the burette. Q. So this is mark Q. And this is the P. So Q is the right. So I want to fill it in first, but I want to rinse it first. I close the tap. We the sink. Q into burette. Q into burette. So I'm just doing the rinsing. So I just fill it in a little bit. My tap is still closed. So what I'll do is I will swirl around the side so that you can see the liquid flowing onto the upper part. So I'm trying to wash as much of the side as possible but I don't want to spill it onto the ground because slippery ground is very very dangerous in the lab and you're not supposed to run or you're not supposed to spill anything in the lab not onto the ground at least so what I'm doing is I'm rolling the burette so that the liquid is slowly rinsing the side and now it's coming back down again so I will open the tab but not to the ground I'll open it into the sink okay sorry you don't really see this but no so open it into the sink, making sure that the bottom bit is all rinsed through. So I don't want that because that is the rinsing, okay? So I don't combine my rinsing, which is which could be anything that was in the burette previously, not necessarily what we are filling it in with. We then close the tap and then we fill it in. How much do they say? Put Q into the burette. So they don't say how much volume to use. I am just going to fill it up. But remember just now, I actually closed the tab all the way. I closed the tab all the way. 
So just now I close the tab all the way. Uh, sorry, I, I open the tab all the way and everything flows out. So at the moment, this, this thing at the bottom was what I rinsed through. So I need to open the tab again in order to allow this solution, which is a clean, clean, clean portion that I just added in. After I rinse it, I need to open the tab and allow it to flow. Okay, then I close the tab. So whatever that flows through was the good stuff and already wash out whatever that I rinsed the thing with. The very last bit that was remaining in there. I already opened the tab. So this thing is already filled in. This thing is filled in all the way to the top. Uh, they do not say it has to start at 0 0.00, but I'll just probably make my life easy and just fill it up to 0 0.00. So what I'm doing is, uh, you can't see it now, but I am holding on my hand and I am just slowly opening the thing there and try to get it to 0 0.00. So that is 0 0.00. See and keep, close the tab, and then put it back on the support here. Okay, so we are back here. So I have my burette supported, that is 0 0.00. Nah, I should, I should read the thing, because I lost, I should hold this. So that's 0 0.00 and as you know, in, uh, the burette reading is right to one decimal place so you could call it 0 0.0 CN cube for all level of IGCSE uh, which is why your level of penetration accuracy in all level is accepted to plus minus 0 0.20 If you are watching this from an A level student perspective you should know that burette reading is to 0 0.05 CN cube and that is actually the correct one which is why in A level the accuracy of titration the concordant of consistency Tighter must be within plus minus 0 0.10 because of the level of accuracy of your of your burette reading. Okay, so that was Q that is sulfuric acid in the burette. Now I have to take 25.0 cm cube. This is a pipette filler. It's got an air there to suck in the air, which I'm going to do first, and then it's going to be inflated like that. Inflated, deflected. Oh, I forgot what, it, what it's called really. Okay, so I'm just going to push it in. Suck in the air. S stands for suck. E stands for eject. So I want to suck in a little bit. This is the pointy end. So we push this in, but be careful. You do not want to push them in straight away. So it's rubber, rubber on glass. Put it in and making sure it's tight by rotating it. Okay, you rotate it. You don't push it in because if the glass breaks, it can pass through the rubber and it can injure your serve. Okay, so you do not want to injure your serve. So after I rotate it, now it's tight, it's snug. Okay, so how do I want? I want to add 25.0 CNKLP. Remember, my pipette was used for something else previously, so I'll just suck it in first. This is actually not my clean solution, as in, like, I'm not going to use this for my reaction. So, what I'm going to do is I will, I will slowly, oops, so I'm not filling out my pipette, I just want to rinse it, okay, I just want to rinse it, so I'll take out by, ro by rotating my pipette filler, and now I have solution in here, so what I'll do is I will, I will swirl it so that it rotates around, so I rinse it like this, so it's rinsed already. And that is nice and happy because I rinse it with the solution already. So I'm just, I was just rinsing and washing the inside, the bulk of the pipette. Don't worry about the last bit of the liquid. Now I'm going to really take out 25.0 CN cube. Again, push it in, but then rotate around until it's tight. I want to take 25.0 CN cube of P. So I hold P at an angle. Somehow it helps. I think if you hold it horizontally, flat, sometimes it's a bit slower, but I don't know. I mean, I've always learned it that way. Never really understood physics. <laughs> so you have the line somewhere there. You have a line there that represents 25.0 CQ. So I have, do not, one thing I can stress out is that once you suck out into the pipette, do not put it back into the uh, the bottle again because you never know if there's water in here you're affecting the concentration so you do not once you suck up you do not ever put back into the bottle okay uh, this is a big danger whatever you suck up from the bottle already do not ever put it back into the bottle okay it's, it's 
it will contaminate the bottle. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking until I get 25.0 CNQ. So I'm reading below the meniscus and that is 25.0 CNQ. So prepare it into the plastic cup. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to press eject E and then it will be ejected. Okay? So I don't want to hold it too high. So it's slowly being ejected. So it is slow because if you keep pressing E, so what happened then is you can just slowly twist your pipette feeder. And then make sure you don't lose anything. And then it's so much faster now because um, well it's no longer under the under the pipette feeder thing. So this is not the usual on conical flask, but you can still tip, tip, tip three or four times and then that should get rid of whatever whatever last bit of liquid that's left in there that's already taken into account by the accuracy of the pipette all right so put your pipette back onto the support you do not you do not want to break the pipette pipette and burette are really expensive stuff okay so what next Measure the temperature of P. P is in here already. So this is my thermometer. So this thermometer, uh, it reads from minus 10. I'm not sure whether it's clear or not. It reads from minus, I think it's very blurry, the way I see it, minus 10, all the way to 110. So there's 100 and then there's 110. So if you see carefully the reading, the reading is every, every one small line Every one small line represents one degree Celsius. So the, the, the thing can be read to actually 0.5 degrees Celsius as you know the accuracy of thermometer if you are doing air levels. Okay? Not a big deal if you are doing all of that. Just as you see, I'm going to put this bulb of the thermometer. This bulb actually measures the temperature into the solution in the plastic cup. Okay? So you must make sure that the bulb of the thermometer is completely immersed in the solution. If it is not completely immersed, it's not going to record the temperature of the solution very well. So, uh, it says measure the temperature of P to the nearest 0.5 degrees Celsius. So nearest 0.5 degrees Celsius. Record the value in the column E of the table. So you have initial temperature and you have uh, the highest temperature reach and then you calculate you calculate temperature rise your thermometer will not tell you temperature rise this is what you record on the thermometer and this is what you calculate based on this and this all right so this was 25.0 cnqp the initial temperature I've let the thermometer sit in there for like maybe a minute before I read the temperature reading because the thermometer was just taken out from somewhere in the air outside and it needs some time for it to equilibrate for it to come to the actual temperature of the solution so I don't record the temperature of the solution straight away okay so give you at least 30 seconds or one minute which it has already been so I'm going to read the temperature of the solution now so I read like horizontal eye level below the ministers so that's 21 22 23 so i hope you can see it it's not very clear i think uh, i think it's not very very clear but you can hopefully see the silvery line it's around 23.0 degrees celsius because they wanted to they wanted to 0.5 degrees celsius the nearest 0.5 degrees Celsius means you can have 0 0.0, 0 0.5, and then the next one will be 0 0.0 again. So now what happened is, put Q in the burette, which I did, measure 5.0 cm cube of Q into a 25 cm cube measuring cylinder. So you do not insert this from the burette straight into here. You need a measuring cylinder, which I am going to go and get a measuring cylinder now, because I didn't think to read beforehand, so I didn't have my measuring cylinder. So I'll be back in a minute. my 25 mil measuring cylinder so what we're going to do now is we have to measure 5.0 cnq of q from the burette into the 25 cnq measuring cylinder so this is a 25 mil which is the same as 25 cnq measuring cylinder um, we have to edit 
until the total volume of the liquid in this cylinder is 25.06 cube. They say add water, but what you never do is you never use the tap water. Well, that is a tap. Okay, what we use instead is we use this thing called oh no, the level has come off. This thing are the bottle water, they are actually distilled water or deionized water. So, distilled or deionized water means that they are pure water, pure H2O, there are no other impurities, no other dissolved ions, meaning to say they cannot interfere with your results, they do not add a further stuff which are impurities onto your experiment. So all we're doing in chemistry when we do solution chemistry is to use distilled or deionized water. So I get 5.0 CR. So I started out from 0.00, .00 CM3 cube. I keep on saying 0.00, .00 CM3 because I'm used to the high level accuracy which is two decimal places from a pure reading. We use the same view rate for all levels and air levels. So really for me, two decimal places is the way for me personally. And um, if a Cambridge has even a marks your work, they will know that two decimal places is something that you have to do eventually when you go on to do air level chemistry. So um, it's up to you if you want to use one decimal place, which which is what you're probably happy with at your IGCSE or all level chemistry. But whenever you see me saying two decimal place 0 0.00 cm cube, that's because I am simply following the plus minus 0 0.05 cm cube accuracy of a burette. Okay, so I need 5.0 cm cube. So I on the burette, not on the measuring cylinder. Uh, careful towards the end because you don't want to overshoot it. And now I have I have put in 5.0 cm cube. I'm sorry my hands are a bit shaky, but I don't know if you can see this or not. So the thing with glass and camera is that they are not very clear. So I'm not holding this at the right level, but it was 5.00 cm cube. Uh, it started from 0 0.00 cm cube, 5.00 cm cube. That is 5.00 cm cube into the measuring cylinder. I probably don't do this step by step for the other readings because it will be too slow. All I'm showing you is for one. So what I do then is this is 5.00 cm cube. I need to add until it's 25.0 cm cube. So add distilled water. So when you add distilled water, you add until 20. Then you need to be careful. You should use a dropper in the end because you want it to be exactly 25.0 in the end. So you do not overshoot it. So you do not use do not pour straight from the bottle once it is close to 25.00 because it's very easy. You see this thing, it's very easy to over squeeze it and then you can't go back, you have to restart again. That's the biggest danger when you do this kind of experiment, I guess. Um, so I have a clean dropping pipette here. So this thing sucks in the distilled water. So what I'm saying is, when you overshoot the 25.0 cm cube, it's not a matter of taking it out because by that time, you already change the concentration if you overshoot it and it will affect your reading. Compare it with your supervisor reading, which Cambridge will mark your uh, experimental accuracy uh, based on your uh, supervisor result. Okay? So this is what we do towards the end, just like we you do in making our stock solution. We add it drop by drop. But actually, I should have added it much closer to 25.00 cm cube before I actually do drop by drop. Getting there. Getting there. Ideally, you should do this on the table, right? Maybe I should do it on the table because it is flat rather than me holding it on the camera because it is not flat. So. Okay. What I'm saying is, again, this is measuring cylinder. How accurate is the measuring cylinder compared to volumetric flask or compared to pure reading? So again, <laughs> why are we doing it in a measuring cylinder? I could have had two burettes. One burette for the, the whatever this one was. Uh, one burette for the Q, which was dilute sulfuric acid. Instead of doing this dilution in a, in a measuring cylinder, I could have uh, another burette with distilled water. Adding 5.00 cm cube, 
then I just add 20.00 cm cube from the other burette. That will have been a lot accurate than usually the measuring cylinder. Okay, so these are the kind of improvement you can think about how to improve the accuracy of this experiment, such as not using measuring cylinder, measure the volume of distilled water using a burette. Okay, so now it's 25.00 cm cube. Let me just double check the temperature again. Uh, in fact, the temperature of the solution has dropped further. It is now 21.0 cm cube. So it has been a, a bit of a time has passed. It's not very clear. So some time has passed since I'm in this room. Uh, so this is uh, 21.0 cm cube. So do not assume that the temperature always stays the same. So just now it was 23.0 cm cube. So now I have to. I have a new initial temperature, 21. 21.0 cm cube. So I have to change my reading because this is literally just before I mix these two together. So what I want is I mix them together. I have to stir using the thermometer very gently, but it's on a polystyrene cup, so it's not thermometer or glass, so it doesn't exactly damage it. So you can see the temperature slowly increasing. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not very clear. Temperature is slowly increasing. Let me see if I can make this a bit clearer. And still not very clear, but as you see, the temperature is now around 25, 26. So at the moment, the highest it goes up to is around 25.0. I'll give it a little bit of time as I continuously stir it. Uh, still 25.0. Give it some time to see if it goes up any further. So there are seven temperature reading all together. I really... Mm -hmm. Okay. They did ask us to wait for one minute, but I just want to see if it goes up any further. It does not. It stays at 25.0 cm cube. Uh, it is just not very clear, is it? Let me see if it is clear. Perhaps you can follow the silvery line here, somewhere there. Okay, it reads around 25.0 cm cube. Run it to the nearest uh, 0.5 degrees Celsius, so it's 25.0 cm cube. Oh, sorry, 25.0 degrees Celsius. Um, what we have then is we we measure the initial temperature, we measure the final temperature, we calculate the temperature rise. We do not measure temperature rise. The thermometer does not measure the change in temperature. It measures the initial, the final, and then you put it into a calculator. When you put this into the calculator, you have the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So when you press a calculator, 25.0 minus 21.0, the most common mistake a lot of students will do is they will get 4. This is what the calculator will show you. Your calculator will show you 4. That's it, okay? But, you know, 4 is definitely wrong based on what is appropriate. Our data was collected to 0.5 degrees Celsius, so I had a 0 0.0 or 0.5 in my initial or final temperature, which in this case is just 0 0.0 and 0 0.0. So when you do 0 0.0 minus 0 0.0, you don't, you don't see on your calculator, so you should by right instead of 4, you know, you know better than the calculator that your skill, your experimental skill tells you it's not just 4, it's 4.0 degrees Celsius. These are the little things that you look up for, uh, not just for volume, but for temperature, for other things. It's about appropriate number of significant figure. These have been uh, very clearly stated for all uh, experiments. Well, not all experiments, in the syllabus, as part of your experimental skills, uh, data collection, okay, data collection. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail on how I do the other six other readings, so I'm just going to proceed very quickly. Okay, so this is a walkthrough tutorial, so obviously the real thing, obviously the real thing, so um, you would proceed it much faster. So I've just rinsed it with distilled water, so I'm rinsing it with distilled water, I throw away the whole thing, I rinse the styrofoam with a bit of distilled water. I don't want tap water because if I make up my stock solution with distilled water, what is the point of washing with tap water? Okay, so I know it takes, uh, it costs a bit of money to make distilled water because well, you need energy to get the distilled water, but it's essential. That's why practicals are expensive to begin with. Okay, so now I have my clean cup again. It's just got distilled water in there. 
the next thing is still prepared the same amount but then the volume of the other thing from the burette is gone up to 15.0 so if you have 15 points oh sorry 10.0 cm cube of q so i need 10.0 from here into here if i have 10.0 so i need this much which is 15.0 cm cube of uh, distilled water okay so remember i started from five if i need if i need uh, 10 cm cube of q that means from 5.00 i will end up at 15.00 okay so Towards the end, you want to do it drop by drop so that you are being careful. Okay, so that is my 10 cm cube there. I'm going to add distilled water, but again, you don't want to overshoot it, so you have to use dropping pipette towards the end. So I'm very close to 25 now. I'm going to use my dropping pipette and try and get 25 ideally and actually i'll do it on the, on the level ground because when you hold something your hands might be shaking and i want to be reading below the ministers but to be honest as i said earlier this is measuring cylinder so how accurate can be okay we do not pour this into the the, the cup yet because we need to pick that up 25.0 cm cube of P. Okay, so we need another 25.0 cm cube of P. So this is P. So we always keep it out a bit extra, but again, we do not ever pour it back into the flask. So what we do is we just throw it down the sink. Oops. So, I need to be careful. So, that's 25.0 cm cube. Then I inject it, but I also take on the pipette fillet so it goes, it goes down a lot faster, so that it goes down a lot faster without the pipette fillet anymore. Okay, so that gravity does its job. Once the last thing comes off, tilt it at an angle. This is not glass in glass, but it's so it's tup, tup, three or four times and they will get rid of the last few drops in the pipette. Okay, let's support your pipette again because you don't want the pipette to be left rolling down on your table, on your bench and that's dangerous, okay? So, I should have my thermometer. I should really clean it with, I clean it with uh, tissue paper. Don't really have a tissue paper with me by right in the real exam you definitely have a tissue paper okay i'm just using a towel here a dry towel so i have to put it in to the solution from the burette just now i'm oh, sorry not from the burette from the pipette the 25.0 cm cube of uh, p 25.0 cm cube of p into the plastic cup i went for a while because it was just like about two minutes ago when i washed it up wash it out with distilled water and put it in a solution right so let's see if the, what the temperature reading is so when i first started out my first experiment the temperature drops from 23 to 21 uh, after i left it for some time if i leave it again for some time this is an air conditioned room so temperature might go down a lot further but once i'm happy that it reached a certain value i shouldn't leave it lying around any longer i can just pour this other solution for the second experiment in this temperature seems to have settled down into 22.5 so again not the clearest thing in the world okay but it is 22.5 so i'm very sorry it's blurry so that's the thing with a lot of this reading when they get so close to the camera they get blurry so it's 22.5 Temperature is read to the nearest 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, with this thermometer, I will chuck this in now, and then I will stir it with the thermometer very gently. 
and then the temperature rise the temperature is increasing very rapidly it's now closing into 30 uh, it is not very clear at all okay so it's now closing into 30 okay let me move around this thing for a little bit because uh, I think what I think is this thing can be more useful in this angle now Okay, so I can get it closer. So this is closer to 30 degrees Celsius. Well, the highest temperature was around 29 just now. So it's around that. Not very clear at all. Okay. Anyway, you just have to take my word for it. It's um, it is 28.5. That's the highest. 28.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. And it seems to have settled on that. So 28.5 was the highest, minus 22.5. My calculator shows me 6, just like your calculator will show you 6. Again, this is temperature rise. This is what you calculated. Instead of writing it down as 6, you really must write it down as 6.0. Okay, to be consistent with the data. Alright, so I will quickly wash my thermometer. Mix it out. And then what I'll do is I will chuck the styrofoam cup content into there and then just rinse with water, distilled water, not just any water. Okay, so making sure that as much of the water has been gotten rid of. Okay, put it back in here. Now I have to go back to the pipette thing. I don't know what's wrong with this. Uh, okay, that should be all right now. So going back to the pad thing, I have to pad out another. So it seems like quite a lot of experiments. So I should probably talk less and talk more. I mean, I already gone through the basics of a lot of these uh, practical skills. So I mean, we are just repeating the same thing to complete the series of results. There are seven experiments they want us to do together. This is an idea of something called so I have I have accidentally ejected a lot more than I need. So I need to suck in more, but I do not eject. Okay, I suck in more is okay, but I do not eject back. I do not ever eject back uh, the solution from the pipette into the bottle itself. Okay, so this thing I am ejecting is 25.0 cm cube. So what we do now is we just take out the pipette feeder without ejecting. So once you take it out from the bottle, you don't want to suck in anymore because you're just sucking the air. So make sure you press eject while you slowly twist. Mm, nope, I don't want that. Hang on, just give me a minute. Okay, so we slowly we slowly twist out the pipette feeder. And that is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm okay with experiment one, experiment two, and now I'm on experiment three. I should put my thermometer, which I already wiped clean just now, back into the flask. I really have to start that pipette out. I just want the equilibrium, I just want the temperature to equilibrate first before I do the reaction. Okay, so what do I have now? I need uh, now it's slightly tricky. Now it's very tricky now. If you look at experiment 3, it is not 15, it is 12.0 cm cube. So 12.0 cm cube of cube. Just now I have 5 and then I have 10. So now my rating on the view rate is 15.00. So if I want 12.0 cm cube from the view rate, and I start from 15.00. So what I'll do is I get 15.00 from the burette. I need to take out 12.0 cm cube. So I must stop at 27 cm cube. Right? So I must stop at 27 here, and they will give me 12 cm cube in the machine. Okay. Now I have once it reaches 26, I must slow down and do it from my drop. So now I'm doing drop by drop because I don't want to overshoot it. Okay, 
So that is now 27.00 on my period. I started out from 15.00. So that is 12 mil. So this is 10, this is 15, so that is 12.0 cm cube. And again, I need 13 cm cube in order to make it up to 25. So I just add water, distilled water. And then I must be careful in the end, so don't be greedy. Use a dropping pipette because you don't want to have to do it again. Once you overshoot it, there is no turning back, alright? Okay, so I got my 25.0 cm cube of the solution. So this is experiment 3. I haven't recorded my initial temperature. I've already let it settle there for a bit. It's 22.0. 22.0 cm for degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to add this in. And I will read the temperature. So the temperature is increasing rapidly. I'm stirring very gently with my thermometer. It's close to 30 now. I wonder if it is going to increase beyond 30 degrees Celsius. So it is now around 30. So I'm not holding this, I'm not holding this the right way, but the the silvery mark there you can see inside is around 30. And it seems to be nice and happy settling there for 30 degrees Celsius. That is the highest temperature it reached, 30.0. 30.0 minus 22.0. Again, this is what your calculator show you. I'm not sure how clear it is. Okay, so I show you it's just 8, but it's actually 8.0. Okay. Experiment 4. I need 16.0 cm cube from the burette. Experiment 4. I need 16.0 from the burette. My reading is 27.0 now. 27.00 plus 16.0. Thing I need until 43. So from 27.00, I need to take out 16.0, so I need to stop at 43. Okay? I should really do my pad thing first because it takes some time for the temperature to equilibrate. So just washing and well, rinsing out my thermometer, wiping it clean, and then chucking away the styrofoam cup content. Rinse with distilled water one time, two time, just to get rid of whatever solution was inside. Okay, so by the time you are familiar with instructions, they get really fast. So, again, push it in, swirl it around, and then we're gonna suck in the solution P. Pet P. So make sure that whatever you do, you do not get confused between the two solutions. So probably keep the burette solution on one side, close to the burette, so that you never get confused. All right. So I overshot it. So I need to eject this thing a little bit. And it's twenty-five point zero cm cube now. Eject it into the plastic cup. Take out by rotating very very gently the pipette filler and gravity will do its job for you. That's when the solution will come down from the pipette into the plastic cup, well styrofoam cup, put it at the angle, tap, 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 around four or five times. I uh, well I have my own superstition when I do these things, usually around three or four times, or sometimes five times. Different people, different skills, different superstition I guess. My thermometer was already washed, well, rinsed with water, and then I clean it out and wipe it clean. I'm gonna let the thermometer sit there again just for the temperature to equilibrate. You see what happened there? My paper already got dirty. Okay, so you need to be careful and not, um, not make your exam paper wet. Okay, so usually I'm working on my iPad, which is an uh, electronic screen, so it doesn't get wet. Um, but when you're actually working on the real paper, if it gets wet, it's very bad, okay? So you don't get an extra. As 
I said just now, 27.00 and then 16.0. So I need to stop at 43. Okay. So I look at my key, right? I let it run fast until I reach 42, then I slow down. Okay, then I do drop by drop. And it's 43 and 00, zero might be right. So that is fifth there is fifteen and there's twenty and there's sixteen point zero. Well I know it's sixteen point zero not from the measuring cylinder but from the burette because measuring cylinder is not accurate to one decimal place. Okay? So what I do now is I need to add water, distill water. Make sure you don't overshoot it, don't be greedy towards the end. Okay, use a dropping pipette, take out the water, do it on the ground, on the bench, and rip in all the meniscus. So, measuring cylinder is never going to be super accurate when you make up. A solution like this what we are doing is we are just doing serial dilution so I'll cover a separate in a separate tutorial video what serial dilution actually means okay so I'm ready to read the initial temperature 22.0 22.0 put this in swirl 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 and the temperature has shot past 32. Okay, it's not very, very clear, but you can hopefully see the silvery line is just above 30 right now. I'm holding this the wrong way, isn't it? Okay, so it doesn't look very clear on the screen. But whatever you do, yeah, okay, these things are straight from your experiment. What you do, not what, I, not what I'm doing here, but what you do. So that is 32.0 degrees Celsius. It doesn't seem to go up anymore. 32.0 minus 22.0, so that is 10. But then 10 on your calculator is not to one decimal place, so it's 10.0 degrees Celsius. Experiment 5 required 18. It required 18 from here. I'm ready down to 43, so it's time to top up the burette. The burette was Q, so I need to make sure that I'm putting Q into the burette. I'll fill it up to the very top again because it seems like we need quite a lot of this thing. And when we'll filling out to the very top, that means the 0, 0 0.00, which is there, but I've overshot a little bit, so it's okay. I'll just run whatever I overshot into the sink. So I have overshot again. Well, I mean, I've passed the 0 0.00 mark again. So these things take some practice. All right. So I'm holding on my hand instead of doing this on the stand because I'm comfortable enough with my burette. And I've reached 0 0.00. So keep it here. So how much do I need? I need 18.0. So I start from 0 0.00. If I start from 18 0 0.00, I need 18.0 CMQ. So I will stop at 18.00. Okay. The thing with this thing is that you must make sure that your your bread gets gets held very tightly. Otherwise, you risk breaking your bread. Okay. So I'll drop my drop to this end. So that is eighteen point zero zero cm cube. Oops. I nearly overshot it just now. Okay, because I nearly turned my blue right three sixty degree. So I'm gonna add some water. And I'll be careful towards the end. Use a dropping pipette. And 
end that one is done. And I forgot that I should rinse this out before. Okay, anyway, it's not too late to do it now. So what I do then is just throw this away. Rinse this with water, or distilled water. And one. Okay, so we need to head out. We need to head out here. This tutorial is getting long now because <laughs> I'm getting tired as well doing this experiment. <laughs> so many readings and then obviously like it is 12 months so it does take quite a bit of time and that is why uh, practicals are worth it I guess because um, it teaches you how to be passionate. I mean not passionate passion but you know it teaches you to be patient while waiting for results. Some stuff cannot be rushed, okay? So I keep on, keep on overshooting the thing. So I need to make sure that it's 25.0. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. 25.0, okay. I am running out of energy now, so I'll stop talking for a little bit and just concentrate on getting the rest of the results. So it does take some time between uh, cleaning up your stuff and doing the next bit. So until you're very clear of the procedure, you're always going to be disadvantaged when you do this kind of practical game. Okay. Uh, I'll put my thermometer in there. So while waiting while waiting sometimes, okay, while waiting for your experiments or whatever, you are supposed to, let me just get this straight first, something is wrong with this thing, okay, so while waiting for some kind of, um, I don't know, while waiting for just temperature to equilibrate or whatever, you can, you're supposed to read instructions and stuff, so it's 22.0, okay. and now I have a solution ready, Chuck it in, stir it, and see what the temperature rise up to. It's gone up to around 32.0. So give or take, it's still around the same temperature. Uh, not very clear, not very clear. Is it clear to you? It's not very clear to you, is it? Okay. Doesn't matter, it's around 32.0. So it seems like the temp maximum temperature rise is really been uh, of 10. Nope, it doesn't go any higher. Okay, so I'm ready to just do the next experiment again. So I still have two more experiments to complete. So let's rush a little bit. Head out. Twenty five point zero CMQ P. My P is running out as well. I need to go and get some more. There's Q. There's my P. Job. Uh, of course, then we need to put a thermometer in there and we need to run a little volume we need in the turret into the measuring cylinder and make it up to 25 CFQ before we mix the solution together. So this thing was ready to rinse. And just let it sit there. The next experiment actually required 20.0 CFQ of Q. 20.0 CFQ of Q. I am at 18.00, so 20.00 plus 18.00 is 30. Oh, sorry. Yep, 38.00. So I will let it run until 
plus 38, then I will do drop by drop. So these are the kind of things, right? Like, um, it's quite practical, it's very important because I say it teaches you to be patient, to follow strict procedures, okay, as well as to read instructions, thinking about stuff as you are doing in high coordination. So it's close to the end now. And that's the end of the zero. So I wish to call you that neat. Which I'll make sure because this thing is not very tight anymore. I don't want to break my blue red okay. Don't forget, some students will actually forget to make it up to the 25.00. Uh, okay, and then I just add water. Uh, I should really be doing this on the bench, but anyway, the idea is that uh, make it up to 25 mil and read my initial temperature. Don't forget to read the initial temperature, so that's 22.0 again. 22.0. them in and then out. we'll find out what is the maximum temperature rise. So the temperature has risen to, well it was fast, it's risen to 32.0 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's not very clear obviously, okay? But anyway, it's clear on my side so when you, when you have the chance in the lab, you should really do this kind of experiment. So that's 32.0. 10.0 uh, degrees Celsius temperature difference. Again, okay. the capital will show you only 10. And my last one is I'm just using 25.0 CN cube, but I'm down to 38 here, so it's definitely not enough. So I fill the red with Q. So always read instruction because sometimes when you forget things, then um, you kind of mess up the whole thing, right? So I will not need to fill out to 20.00. I only need 25 cn cubes, so I can fill it up to just 20 because 20, if I have 20 in my burette, 20 plus 25 is just 45, so I would overshoot it. So that's 20.00. So this time I don't need to add any water. So I'm just going to chuck this away now. Rinse it with some distilled water. Okay, and uh, I also remember to rinse my thermometer and wipe it. Supposedly, you get a clean tissue paper. I don't have a clean tissue paper here, but the towel will have to do. This is the last experiment, this is experiment 7, uh, where we are not diluting the pureed solution. So we are going to prepare P, so this is P, I was just rereading the question because you know, I am very forgetful and sometimes once you make certain mistakes uh, uh, it will be detrimental, it will be really really disastrous if you read certain things incorrectly especially practical, okay? Just make sure that in the real thing you never do this kind of mistakes So I'm going to inject whatever I overshot so there's 25.0 straight into the polystyrene cup or the styrofoam cup. Let gravity do its job. I really shouldn't be shaking it up and down. So nearly done that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'll put my pad back for safety reason. Insert my thermometer in there and I'll record the initial temperature in a little bit. So now this we read is supposed to read 20.00 but it's just a bit of work, so I'll get rid of just maybe one drop. Okay, so that's 20.00 and I need 25.0, so essentially fill up the measuring sphere with no need for any addition of water. So 20.00 20 plus 25 is going to be 45. That's why I needed to refill my urine just now a little bit. 
my eye should be on the accurate, but they will measure the accurate volume of uh, the solution, not actually the measuring standard, it's the solution in the burette that is measured accurately. So I'll slow down towards the end and do it drop by drop because we don't want to overshoot it. Okay, so I have my 25 ml of solution. I read my initial temperature. There's a 22.0, so it seems that 22.0 looks like the equilibrium temperature in this room, I guess. Pour in the solution and stir very gently with the thermometer. And the temperature has gone up straight to 31, 31.5. Does it go to 32? And let's see. It goes to 31.5 only, it doesn't go to 32. Unlike the last couple of experiments, they actually peak at 32 degrees Celsius. This one is at 31.5 degrees Celsius. As a matter of fact, this is the first one that if you put into a calculator, 31.5 minus 22.0, you are going to get one this place. Answer, I made the rest, so this is 9.5 degrees Celsius. So I have the rest of my table values. And I think I'll continue this uh, on my iPad screen in another tutorial videos where I will talk about data processing. So a lot of these uh, experimental videos is more about data collection, which I just did. It's 12 marks. You will be judged based on how accurate your data is compared with your supervisor, which is most likely your teacher or another teacher from your center who will have to do the practical and submit the result to Cambridge, unless you're doing alternative to practical paper, which of course I can give you the results, then the data processing uh, will matter more to you, so you can catch my alternative to practical tutorial playlist. If you're an A-level student, these are data processing, sorry, data collection as well. Uh, that might be applicable to you and of course questions in A-level will be more complicated involving error analysis, suggestion for improvement, uh, what else could go wrong, etc, etc. Okay, so that's it for me in this tutorial video. My focus is on the various type of practical, the actual data collection and the experimental skills involving burette, pipette, washing, temperature, I don't know, dilution, etc, etc. Okay, so don't forget to click the button on the bottom right, subscribe to my channel, and uh, please share the channel widely with all your friends, your chat group, your study group, your relative, your teachers, your students. So these kind of experimental videos are applicable to any 14 to 18 years old, regardless of whether you're doing IGCSE O-level or A-level, or even the IB. Uh, but in terms of the data, uh, processing as well as uh, data analysis, there are certain level of depth that are more suitable for A-level students and there are certain kind of simpler calculations that are more suitable for all level or IGCSE students and I'll cover those in a, in a different tutorial video uh, so that it's not uh, generalized to everyone. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So check out my social media account as well, ptet.chemistry, that is ptet.chemistry on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for watching.